Hi, everyone. Welcome in. Welcome in. Hello. <laughs> We're talking about peas today, and we got some other great news. So just let you guys know, if you buy MI Gardener seeds, it really helps us in a way, and it helps out you too. Yes, yes, yes. If you use the word grow big, you get 10% off your seeds. So, yep. So get over there to MI Gardener and type in grow big. <laughs> yeah, grow big. Grow big. So, and this is only uh, with Luke, he's only using this under several people like Roots and Refuge. Um, it's a just a, it's affiliation. That's what it, it's a partnership affiliation. I'm kind of flattered by that because we don't have the subscribers like Roots and Refuge. That means that Luke like believes in us. So that kind of means a lot because I mean, that's we're in the kind of the same category, but we don't have near as many subscribers. So it makes me feel good. It makes me kind of want to cry a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to lie. Hey, Jade Doe. What's up, girl? And so when you guys, if when Luke gets all these results and stats, he knows exactly where seeds are going by yeah. the coupons. Or not coupons, the, the code. Okay. So if he sees a whole bunch of grow bigs, he's going to like, you know what? I want to be part of that company. I want to be part of them. So he's given us a chance to shine. And at the same time, well, it's up to you guys to help us shine. You guys, it's so easy to drop 50, 60 bucks and buying seeds from my gardener. And not only that, you're getting a ton of seeds because what? They're $2 a pack. And then you use that and then use our code. You're going to get a bunch of seeds for ridiculously in, in, inexpensive. So um, head on over there and use our code. And then that way they know it came from us. And um, plus their seeds are awesome. They're, I, I, any seed that I've ever gotten from MI Gardener has always came up. It's always sprouted. There's never been an issue ever. And they come really fast. I'm like really surprised by that. They're faster than ba Baker Creek. Like, I don't know if it's just because I'm in Ohio and they're in Michigan, but <laughs> that could be it too. But they are, their seeds come really fast. So, now, I, I have known Luke since he was a kid. Oh, once he started getting on YouTube. So, that's how our affiliation started. And same thing with Jess from Roots and Refuge and a couple other people. Um, and I'm so excited, I'm so ecstatic that we're affiliated with them. Per oh, it's yeah. like, it's like, wow, this is awesome. Yes. And, but we just need your help, guys, because that really helps us out tremendously. Because we don't want just a, this to be a one-year thing. We want this to be a big thing for a long, long time. And I want to be number one on his list. <laughs> I want to be last. I want to be number one. Right. This is amazing. I am so happy to be a part of this. And um, I can't wait. By the way, y'all. Did you know that we we're going to be interviewing Luke on Tuesday? Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. You guys, it's going to be so awesome. You have to make it. Have to be there. You this, seriously, Josie, Joe, and I were talking about it. How many people have interviewed in my gardener? Yeah, Google that. See if you can find it because it's not. We're going to be the ones. I'm so excited. This is Don't like, the pen this is the pinnacle of my career. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just awesome. You guys, I'm so excited. I hope you feel it too. Yeah. Luke does radio. He does TV. Um, can you put the code in like a, on um, one of the, you know, where it has down there, welcome to big grow big TV. Can you put the code in after that so that it goes on a spin? Let's do this. Or on a banner. They call it a banner. Yeah, dancing alone with Reynolds. I think it is. It's only the beginning for us. Next is the, the guy from Baker Creek. I I honestly just want to know what's going on in his head. Because that guy, he he is kind of a marketing genius. He, Thank you so much, Jen. Yeah. So that's, yeah, type in grow big. 
when you go in and it'll be at the end. It'll ask if there's coupons or whatever you type in grow big. But yeah, I want to interview that guy from Baker Creek too. Like, I want to know, like, he his marketing strategy, like, the, how he talks. I don't know if you've seen it, but he just did one recently where he talks about cabbage. It, like, mm -hmm. makes you want to grow the cabbage so you can eat it. <laughs> That's amazing. Like, the guy is amazing. But Luke, Luke, Luke. <laughs> I mean, this is so exciting. Yeah, I Luke. can't wait, guys. Um, we're going to give away uh, two or three things of Cindy's things that she does. So, because they started new merch. So, we're going to give away two or three things of those. Uh, we're going to give out some more seeds, too. And also, they have a new motto. So, you, you guys will find that out on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's not grow big anymore. It's something totally different. So, I'm so excited. Um, I got the news at midnight last night. That he was going to come on. And then this morning, I got, I got the code for to give you guys. Now, you only can use it one time, by the way. Yes. So, see, what happened is people started going to those codes. And they, you know how the computer searches for codes? So, people kept on using all kind of different codes that he shared 10, share 20, share, whatever came up on a computer, it went through. So, he lost a lot, a lot of money. So, we had to think of a new game plan to do this year. And so that was his game plan. Hey, we could share it out during a period of time. This is for our, our, our audience, not the general public. This is our audience, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So Tuesday, spread the news for Tuesday. Um, it's going to be, and we're going to have an after party after or something after, because I don't know. If oh, we, we're definitely going to do an after party. We have to. Like, we have to. We ha we're going to be so energized. We're going to be like, after party, let's talk about this. <laughs> We're going to want to. Yes. Thank you. Hey, Gear. Thanks for coming in, guys. And by the way, if I didn't say hi to everybody, I'm sorry. The chat is kind of going fast. So, T and Fishkeeper, thank you for coming in. Build Our Rock Homestead, Juju B, obviously, thank you for coming in, becoming a green stalker. You're amazing. Thank you for being here. And of course, Uncle Al is here. So, thank you so much. We also got David Gray's here. No, Both on a cool. rock homestead. Kathleen Moran. And she's from New Jersey. Got some Jersey Ooh. love going on. Whoop, whoop. Happy Mac. What's up? Gotta love the people from New Jersey starting to come in this chat. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's becoming a green stalker, too. I think they're from Phillipsburg. Right next to where I was, a great wolf, wolf lodge, like 20 minutes away or something like that. Uh, Jaden's here. Ted Pottle. And man, and I'm really blind. You got Garden State, so and so. And Jane, obviously. I can see obviously now too. Jane's awesome. Yeah, I'm she's so amazing. And thank you for being here every time. Thank you for being an awesome moderator. Awesome. And happy, happy Max here and Green uh, Green Granny. Thank you, guys. Wanda Moses. Jersey Twister is here. Oh, the Jersey Twister. She's my next door neighbor. No. Like five minutes apart. Nice. Maybe five minutes apart. I don't know. I'm not sure, but um, she lives in a town over, which is so exciting. Dancing alone with Brentles here. It's the Marshmallow Man. The Marshmallow Man. He was just on my live the other day. Thank you so much. Tennessee, fish, Tennessee uh, fish Keeper. And as you guys know, I'm blind, so if I see something wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> and now I can't hear. So if I'm duplicating things when Quirky talks, I'm sorry. <laughs> My ears are clogged. I'm oh, doing the best the I Wick can. The Wickashire is here. The Wickashire. Thank you for coming awesome. in. Thank you, Billy. So we have 25 people in the chat just to start, which is really awesome. Um, oh, one second. We got some other news. The other news is... Anybody got a sweater handy? Is anybody creative in the chat? Because we're going to have... Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna I'm so have... freaking excited. I know. It's great. We are going to have an ugly Christmas sweater competition. Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. You guys are going to love it. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to make your own sweater. 
You can buy one at the Goodwill. You can whatever you want to do. You can decorate it however you want to decorate it, but it does have to be PG, okay? Except for Joe, he's going to have booby tassels. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no, you got to make it at least T presentable pro big tv appropriate so okay so you can do that and then we are going to have you register so we know that you're going to be there so you have to register we're going to pick the uh, the people we're going to have another judge who is ladybird that joe knows and um yeah so we're going to judge and then the winner who what is the winner going to win a ninja mixer Ooh. So a Ninja Mixer, they usually range between $100 and $150. You could do put your food in there. You could buy other appliances. So we're just, we, it's the whole mixer. Do so we have it's a not the other stuff out? that goes with it. Are we going to, do we have a date cut out? I don't, I can't remember. No, we don't have a date no, yet. It's going to be, yet. it's going to be like the day after Christmas to New Year. Somewhere is in there. Somewhere in between that week. Yeah. So we'll let you guys know immediately, and then we'll give you an email address so you can type in to say, yes, I'm entering. Um, we need to have your your information to just make sure that we know that you're going to be there. Because it's not fair to have everything set up for somebody else and them not show up. So, And so how we're going to do this, too, is you're going to come on for about two minutes and show what you have. We're going to judge. There's going to be criteria and stuff like that. But it's all going to be a time wise. So we say you got to be there at seven. You have the seven oh two. So you yeah. could introduce yourself. This is what I'm wearing. Blah blah blah. And then we talk a couple minutes, a minute or so. You know, make a judgment, quick judgment, and next person goes up. It's gonna be, it's gonna roll. <laughs> so that's how we're gonna try to do things. We don't want if two or three people do this contest, it's not really worth doing. But I think there's gonna be a lot of people going to be want to do this. It's yes. just it's fun. I want to see as many as I can because it's kind of funny. I want to see how creative <laughs> you guys can get with your sweaters. And the crocheting family, they're going to get into this. I guess that's where Lisa Ladybird loves come comes from. And I'm telling you what, there's going to be criteria where there's going to be judging. When you're talking about judging, it's going to be some hard judging. It's going to be fun <laughs> when you see the criteria take take the criteria by heart that's all i'm gonna say it's <laughs> I, I oh can my see gosh that'd be funny who got she says what if ginger ninja wins a ninja <laughs> 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 that'd be kind of funny wouldn't it <laughs> oh that'd be that'd be great i love that comment so today guys we're going to talk about peace and I'm going to start our intro to start, and we're going to go right from there. And I just want to say thank you, Vineyard Chicks, so much for doing this. And after this video, it's going to be automatically started the show. So right now, yeah, it's a shocker. <laughs> or my uh, little things I add, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> but I'm working on it. And player to share this out, guys. It really, really helps us in so yeah. many ways. More people to share out, the more this gets out and helps us out as well. And if you share it out, people will come to you as well. It's like you get a double whammy. <laughs> Big 
And here's Joe and Courtney. Yay! That was so impressive. I love when he, I, I think it's, I, that was so well done. <laughs> I thought it was great. And thank you so much from the Vineyard Chicks. Um, that was great. And uh, we might have some other things in the future headed up too. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and uh, welcome in CB. Mike's Chaotic Gardening's here. Um, trusting God. And thank you so much for sharing us out and talking about us every single day and every single morning. I mean, every single morning. <laughs> they're talking about us. Awesome. And thank you, God, so so you guys know, he has, I think, an era 900 subs. Wow. So if you guys could uh, help boost him, we really appreciate it. And Wanda Moses said, outstanding. Um, Chef Kicker, I think she's around the same thing. And uh, TV, oh my God, I keep on forgetting her name. So I just came into her live. Well, I just met her about two weeks ago. And she was in our live one time. And I, I just constantly forget her name. And I don't know why. But uh, when she, if she comes in live, I'll make sure I shout her out. Uh, the Nightlife is here. Welcome in. Hello. And 10 TV. That's it. 10 TV. Oh, okay. There's uh, Tammy at Rebel Canners. The Rebel is here. The Rebel. Okay, so we're going to talk about our growing guide for peace. And thank you guys for everybody coming. It's 29 people in the chat. Okay. We got some trivia later on for you guys. <laughs> Can't wait. So peace growing guide. A little bit of history. Gardener English peas, a hearty, cool season vining annuals grown for the fresh, immature green green seeds and pods. Peas are classified. Um, I can't even say that name. <laughs> I thought I deleted that part. And a frab say say family, which consists of approximately 700 a genera and 17,000 species. It's just a fancy word for saying legume. That's what they are. There you go. I don't know why it has to be legume, no say, whatever. <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> but yeah. So, guys, just to let you know, I did this at 11 o'clock last night. So, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, with cosmopolitan <laughs> distribution throughout the temperate, subtropical and tropical zones in the world. Many species in this family are used as food, forest, timber, and dye plants. Dye plants, think of your uh, beets, right? Peas are thought to have originated in the eastern rim of the Mediterranean in, in the Mideast. Remains of 7,000-year-old carbonized seeds have been found in Switzerland. Well, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Right. By the height of the Greek and Roman civilizations, peas and legumes in general are well-established garden field and green mature crops. Did you guys know, like, the, like I don't know, it's a story from Baker Creek, but the King Tut peas, they said that they found those peas in his tomb. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah, pretty cool. That's where like the legend comes from. So cool. If you guys have never grown to King Tut peas, you have to because they're super cool and they're big. They're like bigger than a normal pea and they're purple. <laughs> Look at this nice picture I put in here. Oh, nice. <laughs> I love peas. Like they don't even sometimes make it that I like I just eat those right out of there. <laughs> they're so good. So guys, part of doing this channel and a growing guides is we're going to be totally different than anything you've ever seen. So we talk a little bit about history. We're going to talk about what's going on. We're, it's just totally different growing guides. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy what we do. And if there's any kind of suggestions, let us know. We might put it to action. So cro crop rotation group. Legumes, so the peas and bean family. Because leg legumes are capable of fixing nitrogen by associating with, with social ba uh, bacteria, garden peas are mistakenly thought to need little or no supplemental nitrogen. The truth is, is they fix very little nitrogen unless inoculated with the appropriate species of bacterium. They will also use the most of the nit nitrogen they fix and thus don't particularly enrich the soil for the following crop. 
Phosphorus is an important nutrient for early root development and to assist with flowering, fruiting, and sugar development. Fortunately, legumes are efficient at gathering and concentrating phosphorus. It's best to rotate pea crops every year or two to avoid the, a buildup of soil-borne diseases. And that's what you don't want, guys, right there. That's a, mm -hmm. that's really key. It's best to rotate pea crops every year or two to avoid that soil-borne diseases. And really, that is like the case for everything. You want to rotate your crops anyway. And that is like... If you rotate your crops, you're going to have not as many bug problems too. Because if you have, like, say, for instance, if I grew cucumbers two or three years in a row in the same area, like, eventually they would just get decimated with cucumber bugs. And I wouldn't have any cucumbers. So it's really important to rotate your crops. So, you know what, Kaylin? You should be able to grow crops. Because it doesn't have to really be in the sun all day. Um, you could get, especially if it's in a warm season, if you want to be in a shade, you don't you don't need as much sun. So I know you're in a colder region, but it might be able you might be able to grow some peas. And they are so good picking right off out of the plant. Oh my yeah. god, they are so sweet. Yeah. Uh, welcome in casings 55. Welcome in. And becoming a green stalker says my dogs love peace. Just as much as beans. <laughs> How about the carrots? <laughs> now, companion planting. We're always going to try to talk a little bit about companion planting uh, for each vegetable and a growing guide. So for peas, the best companion pan, uh, plants are the ones that share their carrot requirements, as well as help them grow better and use your gardening space more efficiently. efficiently. Harvest time does not need to be the same. Options for companion planting include the beans, carrots, celery, corn, cucumbers, eggplant, peppers, radishes, spinach, tomatoes, and turnips. But here we go, guys. This is very important because if you got the good, you're going to have the bad. <laughs> and try, especially when you go your grow your brassicas, you, you make sure there are certain things that grow, grow next to each other. Yes, right. Not, that's very important to know that. So uh, plants in, in the onion and garlic family, the onion family, are not good partners for pea, peas because they tend to stunt the growth of peas. Now, peas don't grow ten, tremendously high in some, some of the varieties, but some of them do grow up right. a trellis pretty far. So you never want to stunt the growth of a pea. Actually, you don't ever want to stunt the growth of anything. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, we want to we want to grow big around here. That's right. We want to grow big. Uh, <laughs> avoid planting these plants near. Uh, avoid planting these plants near peas, onions, garlic, leeks, shallots, scallions, and chives. And that's very interesting about chives because I I was originally told plant put chives everywhere, but hey, they stunt the growth. So that's yeah. that's a very good thing to know. Peas, as most legumes, prefer a, uh, a slightly acidic 6.8 to a slightly alkaline 7.2 soil pH. This higher pH range also provides the high calcium needs of peas. Peas are intolerant of acid soils. Now, anybody ever do the pea test in here? You put the pea on a towel. And you, then all of a sudden you see the little things come on out. Did anybody ever do that in class before? Mm -mm. We used to have that when I was very little. And I'm like, oh, look at that thing. <laughs> look at that pee. Oh, that's disgusting. Just put him in the ground already. <laughs> oh, man, it really stinks when you can't hear in one ear. <laughs> come on, pop ear, pop. <laughs> um. So pre-germination is another method of starting seeds. Sprouting yeah. seeds before they are planted gives them a head start before being planted in a garden. By yes. co closely controlling temperature and moisture, you, you can achieve a higher and quicker rate of germination. When you get peas, like say, for instance, you get them in a packet. By the way, peas do not like to have their roots messed with. Okay. Mm. So whenever we did plant peas or thought about them, we put them in those pea pots 
And then we would slice the pea pot and not touch the roots of the peas. Then later on, we decided that it was better to direct sow. Since we were direct sowing, the best method for us was to soak our peas overnight. And we buy them by the pound, typically. And I have a pound uh, right now of Lincoln peas. And I would put them in a container and soak them overnight. A lot of times you can actually see the sprouts from them just soaking overnight. But that mm. actually helps them to grow because a lot of times when you get those peas, they're hard as heck. They're really hard. So it's really hard to get those to sprout. <laughs> so soaking them um, really starts them off. So uh, going off this pre-germination, that's great with Corky with this because that's how we do it too, actually. <laughs> um, you could also lay your pea. After, after you put what I said, that the pre-germination, you lay, pre lay your lay pea seeds between the folds of a moistened paper towel and place them inside a clear, perforated plastic bag. Keep seeds moist in a warm place. When roots begin to grow, plant the seeds in containers or directly into the garden. When transplanting seedings, be careful not to break off the tender roots. Because like Corky said, I think that's at least it's that fast. Or you can just start the seeds indoor, indoors in a container or grow transplants. Plant one seed into a well-drained soilless potting mixture into two to three inch container. Plant the seeds to only half of the recommended depth. Gently press a little moisture uh, media over the sprouted seed. Care for them the same, same as any other vegetable transplant. Note the pea seeds. So this is very important, guys, when you're saving seeds. So note that pea seed vi viability is relatively short, three to four years, under ideal circumstances. So if you have peas in your house that's been there for a long time, I would just throw them out in the garden anywhere and empty the package already. <laughs> so, because peas, they generally don't keep when you want to grow them. Not like a tomato seed where, I mean, I have tomato seeds I plant in my garden are 20 years old and they grow, you know, if you kept them in the right air spot. And really do your research before buying because I'm just speaking from my experience. I love peas and every year I wanted to grow some. So I think I've been through every possible scenario. <laughs> um, but yeah, do some research because this last year I thought I was getting awesome peas and I got I got a variety of snow peas and I didn't realize that they do not get big. They were like little bushy peas and they were delicious because they they were really small and they were, you know, delicious. However, I didn't get the amount of peas that I wanted because these were just a really small bush variety. So Lincoln peas, things like Lincoln peas, um, King Tut peas, all those, they're vining. So they will grow up trellises and they get bigger and they get their pods are like huge. So you get more for your, more bang for your buck. But the smaller ones are just as delicious, but I almost needed to grow like two beds of them instead of just one long bed because I didn't, I only got eight pounds instead of the 20 pounds that I wanted. <laughs> so something to think about. And Billy said in the chat, he says, uh, well, the, his first P test said not pregnant, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that was your P test, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> So positioning, full sun. Uh, again, you get away with put it in the shade a little bit too. You don't want to grow peas. It's, it's a spring vegetable, guys, or a fall vegetable. It's not a summer vegetable. So, But if you're going to plant it first thing in the spring, you do want your full sun. Uh, so seeds in a garden one to three inches apart in spring when soil temperatures re reach at least 40 degrees. Pre-germinate seeds for earlier harvest. Plant in wide rows about 18 inches apart. Double rows may be spaced to 8 to 10 inches apart to 18, 24 inches on center. Plant grown, uh, plants grown together will hold each other up. Cultivators vary in branching habit. Um, branch types should be planted closer together, and branching types should be farther apart. Uh, late mature and tall. They have tall cultivator uh, cultivars. Uh, can be trellis to improve the growth and make harvest easier just like uh 
Corky just said. Um, here's the here's the, we talked about the sun requires direct light at least six hours. So for a kaolin, if you got those six hours of light, you could grow peas. But it prefers eight to ten hours a day. Also, this is very important because a lot of people don't do they plant a trellis after it goes up. You want to plant the trellis prior to planting, and it's rotated around a garden so it, not to be tempted to repeat the crop in the same bed before two or three years have passed. But those roots, like Corky said, are so fragile that you don't want anything to disturb those roots. Right. So get that trellis in way early. Get that plant uh, trellis done in February, March, before you plant. Um, that's very important. And it doesn't have to be anything expensive. Um, I do a lot of cattle panel stuff because it's easier for us. But you can buy a lot of things on Amazon, trellises, different types of things. Um, make your own trellis out of, out of twigs, whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be expensive. So Hendo says live again. Yes, yes, Hendo. We go live every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. And on Sundays uh, for at least the next month, we'll go live for our Sunday Fun Day show. So we talked a little bit about climbers before with uh, with Corky. So you have your bush and climber peas as well as beans and tomatoes. It comes in two forms. You got the bush and you got the climbers. As with beans, uh, originally all peas were rampant climbers. Dwarf or buff, bush varieties are a result of breeding efforts that have been selected for quicker master. Uh, <laughs> I ain't gonna even say that word because I want to say something else, and <laughs> that's not good. For the <laughs> <laughs> Moderation and easier care and labor of our fencing and picking. Each take has its pros and cons. So you got your bush types, and this is very important, guys. So if you want a quicker uh, crop, bush types are fifty to sixty days, while your climbers are sixty to seventy-five days. So if you you have a really hot summer, you don't want that climbing bean because the the peas are gonna that they die earlier. Mm -hmm. So be careful. It's so important to know when you're going to plant your peas. Also, especially if you're going to, okay, say for instance, it's getting close to like 70, 75 degrees and like you're running towards the end of your peas. Um, you can leave them dry on the vine. But my suggestion to you would be to cover them because birds, particularly my turkeys, um, they love to eat peas. <laughs> so your best bet would be to cover those up, let them dry on the vine, and then you can use those peas for the next year. So Kathleen Mor Moran says, this might sound crazy. However, is there a way to print out this grow guide? Getting older, memory is not as good as it once was. Well, we could always go back and watch this anytime you want. It's always going to be in our, in our list. Right now, we're not printing anything out. But and we'll have something in the future. And Dr. Paula is here. So uh, we're going to show a video because she does a video every, for each growing guide we have on peas. And she has about 925 subs. So if you have a chance, get, let's get her to 1,000 too. A lot of people in the 920 range. Okay. So feeding and soil. Uh, now, this is very important because there's a lot of... Confused and when people th plant peas, there's a lot of confusions. Um, not usually required, although a mulch of compost, grass clippings, manure, or other organic matter can help poor soils. Peas will appreciate a good sprinkling of wood ashes to the soil before planting. And I found that very interesting with the wood ashes. Um, wood ashes hasn't been really that many ever people used wood ashes, especially before planting peas. And I found that very interesting is helping helping everything grow with peace. Yes. So I think that's pretty awesome. A fertilizer needs. Heavy user of nitrogen peas fix little nitrogen. Incorporate fertilizer before seed and growth is inhibited by acid soils, pH 6, 6 and below. They can withstand heavy frost in the spring and fall. Best to plant in early spring. So... A lot of my information has been by master gardeners. Now, for me, I've been planting peas wrong the whole time because I always thought, well, 
They put nitrogen in the ground, blam. You don't need any kind of fertilizer. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so I was reading all this stuff, and nitrogen is so important to help these plants start. And uh, use those use those compost, grass clippings, and manure, and any kind of organic matter to get these things started. Yeah, and FYI, guys, if you plant these in early spring and say, for instance, if you live in Northeast Ohio, it's definitely going to snow sometime between April and May, typically. Um, and if it does, your peas are definitely going to be okay. I've had snow on my peas and everything else. Um, they are really hardy. Now, I might duplicate myself some places in here, guys. I'm sorry about that. I had a lot of information put in this. I actually had 25 pages and I nittled it down to 14. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it was a lot of information to try to gather and put together. Um, so growing and care of peas. Peas are hardy, but seed germination is delayed when soil temperatures are below 40. So make sure that's very important. Now, like we said, soil is very easy to just put. I mean, peas are very easy just to put right in the ground to germinate. So just got to hit that right timing and you'll have more res better results if you plant them right in the ground just because of the root. Anytime you touch that root, mm -hmm. it, it, you're, you're going to have your problems. Yes. So, and, and you're not going to be, it's not going to be as abundant. And that is like the same with cucumbers too, guys. Um, cucumbers do not transplant usually very well. Um, and you don't really want to touch the roots that much. So um, there are several. Make sure you do your research before you, you know, buy packs or, you know, tra try to transplant them. Um, I've had I've had cucumbers that do okay, but for the most part, ones that I just planted directly in the soil did wonderful. So welcome in Sandy. We got welcome in Ginger Ninja. The ginger. Welcome. Welcome in Missouri at Law, which is Randy. Welcome in, guys. And there's Paul and Mulf Mulfer, too. Uh, thank you guys for all coming. So there are three types of peas grown in a home garden. You got your English or garden peas. You got the snap peas and the snow peas. So I love all of them. Thank I'm you. telling you, when you grow peas and the first time you have them out of the garden, you're going to be like, why haven't I grown this? I mean, a perfect snack for Uber and a perfect snack for at work, you know? Yeah. Instead of eating junk, just snap and eat. <laughs> yeah, it's so delicious. And, yeah, um, I got my son. My son has a hard time doing stuff like that. But this last summer, I got him to open the pods and throw this – throw the uh, peas in a bucket, which I was so excited about. <laughs> I was like, yes, he's doing it. He's going to help me. Now, I hated peas my whole life until I started having them out in the garden when I was a little older. Because I looked at them, you had those peas in the can, and you're like, ah, oh, this is disgusting. Oh, you know? I, I don't know why, but that's something that I, my mom always gave me it was peas and carrots when I was little. So it just stuck with me. And I love peas, carrots, broccoli. I love them all. So yummy. You know when I started liking them when you had the Johnson dinners? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and the carrots were so good because they're all full of butter and crap. Oh and yeah. It, but the peas were good in it too. And I'm <laughs> like, wow, this is really good. Then all of a sudden you have something else and you're like, oh, this is disgusting. I want the Johnson dinner. This is also <laughs> another reason why it's really important to grow your food. And Juju B just reminded me. You when you grow something, it does not taste the same as in the grocery store. It never will. When you grow something, it tastes amazing. And peas are one of those things that I taste. I mean, I love peas in general. I'm going to eat them. But there is a huge difference from frozen peas that you buy or canned peas to the garden. The garden peas are somehow just taste amazing. And every year I like to pick as many as I can. And I end up freezing them myself. I put them right directly in the freezer for stir fries, for, you know, just to eat, put on salads, whatever, because they're that delicious. So if somebody says they don't like peas, have them taste peas from a garden. They might change their mind. Uh, welcome in, wine cellar. And Green Stalker said, uh, 
Joe, uh, what's Johnson dinners? That's when you had the things in the freezer that cost like a dollar <laughs> a long time ago. I'm old. It was like the cheapest, crappiest stuff you ever eat. <laughs> but when you're, you know, we didn't grow up wealthy. We just got the cheapest thing. Your parents, my parents were always very busy. So that stuff in a freezer. Okay, just put it in the oven. There's your dinner. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, it's what it was. So there's three main types of P. Oh, I got that. Uh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, determinant cult cultivars crop is ready to harvest at the same time are uh, bushy and less than three feet in height. And determinate cultivators crop is harvested over several weeks will grow to five feet in height. So in different, different words for the people that have no idea what I'm talking about. Just read your seed packet, <laughs> and then you'll come to a conclusion what I just said. Uh, starchy peas have a smooth, round seed. Sugary peas have a wrinkled seed. So I've never ever, noticed that before of it. Mm. I thought that was very interesting myself. <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? you got to take a look. <laughs> uh, Waiting garden peas have a fibrous root system that includes a taproot. Cultivate carefully. Slife off young weeds at the soil. A soil line or use a thick mulch to prevent weeds. So, yeah, guys, you're pulling those weeds out, man. Be careful what you're doing because you're going to do a lot of damage to your plant. Uh, water in. Keep the root system moist by watering deeply and regularly during dry periods. Water more frequently when pods begin to develop. So that's pretty cool. So those pods, you know, they start to... They start to develop. Man, water, water, water. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you'll notice when you do your zucchinis and your uh, cucumbers, by adding all of the proper water, you're going to have a, abundant. They're going to come up so fast. I mean, they, they want that water. And welcome in Andale Homestead. Thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. There's 32 people in the chat. For those that just came on in, we have and my Gardener interview on Tuesday. So make sure you spread the news. This is very big for us. Um, we're hoping to get over 100 people in the chat when he comes in, um, which is really, really awesome. And please buy some seeds in my gardener and use the code Grow Big, which is un scrolling underneath. You'll get 10% off. And by him being associated with our show or us being associated with his show, um, he sees people buying using the word grow big. It's a one time, the one time chance to do this. We'll have a long history with them. If nobody buys seeds and doesn't use that word grow big, um, can't say bye. <laughs> I'll look at somebody else. So we're hopefully this is a long, uh, a long relationship. Okay. So once established, peas don't require much work. So it's a great, yeah, you can work, kind of work on the rest of the garden, right? Summer's coming, you're getting your tomatoes and getting your summer stuff, peppers put in. So peas don't require much work, which is great for you. Uh, they're able to grab onto the trellis, spread themselves out for a greater exposed uh, time. Make sure you have your air circulation too. You don't want any kind of mildew growing on a plant. That kind of grow, uh, kills the plant a lot faster. They are not very sensitive to weed pressure. So don't worry too much about the too many weeds. If there's certain ones growing around a plant, eh, you know, I would rather trim it, the weed, instead of, you know, all that kind of mess. You don't want to screw up that weed structure. Um, weeding establishes pea patches can do more harm than good, as peas have numerous surface roots that are sensitive to disturbance, like we just said. So here's the shelling pea, guys. The three types of peas. The shelling pea. Shelling peas come in single, double, and multiple potted varieties. Multiple potted varieties throw two or more pods at each node. They are thus more productive. Usually the more modern the variety, the greater the productivity. Shelling peas must be picked eight to ten. After the ten, eight to ten individual individual peas have sized up before the sugar level has turned to start starch, which is every two to four days. So you want that sweet, you want that. You want those sugars, guys. You want that. You taste that pea. It's like it's like eating candy, right? I'm gonna go bypass this a little bit. Um, I'll try to. Or I'll leave this up for a second. So if you guys want to take a look and stop it and read it, 
you guys could do that. It's all about like the telephone pole to grow up to five to eight feet tall, which is really, really cool. But like we said before, if you're growing it, the longer the plant, you got to make sure you plant plant it in the proper area because when it gets too hot, they're gonna they're gonna die. They're gonna create a lot of problems. So make sure when you grow your snap piece uh, or a smaller piece, it's grown at the right time. So this is really cool. So the snow pea was originally developed by Dr. Calvin Lamborn of uh, Gallatin Seed Company in Idaho. Well, it was a breeding mistake. How about that? So the snow pea was a breeding mistake. Mm. He was attempting to solve the production problems of six to seven peas per pod. So I thought that was really, really cool. Notes, support plants with a strong grow of wigworm structures. That's the ones that go across, you know, up like that. Um, over which netting can be tied for them to climb up. Ultimately, use sticky sticks push into the ground near each plant. So like Corky said before, it, it's not an expensive thing to do. I mean, you just have to, you could put a whole bunch of sticks together, put a little thing over top, let them grow up. Um, as I said several times, do not ho don't do not destroy uh, disturb the, uh, the around a plant the soil around a plant. Uh, now this is really cool. I like these little notes, quirky. <laughs> Wit and wisdom. If a girl finds nine peas in a pod, the next bachelor she meets will become her husband. That's a St. Patrick's Day. It's tradition. A tradition. Oh. And then St. Patrick's Day, it's a traditional day to start growing your peas. Hmm, interesting. Right, how about that wit and wisdom? If a girl finds nine peas in a pod, the next bachelor she meets will become her husband. <laughs> <laughs> how many people ever count their peas? <laughs> okay, ladies, count, start counting your peas. If you're single, watch out. <laughs> That's 36 people on the chat. Thank you guys for coming. 38. Al. We're up to 38. Hey, Al, nice. thanks for coming in. Glitter World, uh, Wine Cellar Infused. What's up, guys? Thanks for coming in. Appreciate you. Barb Brownie, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Uh, keep your peas well picked to encourage more pods to develop. So if you don't pick them and let them all go, guys, they're not going to keep on popping up. Pick peas in the morning after the dew has dried. That's when they're crispiest. Always use two hands when you pick the peas. So when you pick the peas, you don't want them to just pull because the whole plant's going to come up because there's no roots to hold it down. So make sure you pull. use two hands. Uh, secure, it says secure the vine with one hand and pull the peas off with the other hand. Peas can be frozen or kept in the refrigerator for about five days. Place in paper bags, then wrap in plastic. If you have missed your pea pig peaks period, you can still pick, dry, and shell them and use them in winter soups. I still can't believe the taste of a pea picked there right out of the garden. 41 <laughs> people in the house. Woo! Thank you. Chris Shira, babies. Welcome in. Welcome in. And Misha Lee's here. Welcome in, Misha. Harvesting. Best pick just before eating. Often sweet. Uh, enough to enjoy raw. Approximately yield. So for a 10-foot row... You could get three to five pounds of peas. Garden peas, harvest and shell when uh, pods are plump and well uh, filled, but before before seed becomes starchy. Snow peas pick, pick when pods are large and flat, but before seed begins to enlarge. And snap peas, when pods are succulent and seeds are small, remove strings from a long uh, searcher of the pod before cooking or eating. Pests which affect peas. Now check this oh. out, guys. I thought you guys really enjoyed this. Look at those aphids. That's what that's what aphids do. That's what aphids look like. Yes, and they're horrible. And you, yeah, and they're green like that. You can't see them. Typically, I can't see them. I mean, it's horrible. I hate them. Not and this good. Is not <laughs> And this is magnifying, so it's very hard to see, like Corky said. Leaf miner. Ugh. So notice that. So it's very important to us to start learning our bugs and what they do to plants. 
because the more you see it, the more you learn it. And then all of a sudden you'll see a leaf. Oh, that's a leaf miner. You know, oh, that's an aphid. You know, instead of saying, oh, I got some bugs in the garden. But little things like this is very important to know. It's so funny that you said that bring on the ladybugs, Wickshire, because last year I, uh, Joe sent me a ton of ladybugs. So we released them and instantly we saw them attacking the aphids and stuff. Like we took pictures of it. It was like, it was like a battlefield. They were going to war. It was like the most amazing thing I've ever seen. They instantly started to attack them. I'm like, yes. And the next one we have, look at the pea moth. Isn't that disgusting? Yes. I think that's really, really disgusting. <laughs> Thank God I've never seen that one before. Yeah, I haven't either. Oh, the slugs. You know, it stinks, especially when you're in the UK. You get a lot of slugs out there. Tons of slugs. Let me see what else. The snail. This is bean white mold. That's when you say, oh, get this out of here. Mm -hmm. Get this out of my garden. And I do have some ladybugs here, by the way. Woohoo! Which is pretty cool. Ooh, they gave us more, more than I thought. Give us another thing, too. Cool. I don't have a like a slug problem here. Unfortunately, uh, I never really have a whole bunch of slugs. So this is another disease that is very common. Is the cucumber mosaic virus? And we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have someone come by and describe all these diseases. That is mm -hmm. really uh, profound. We're gonna I, I'm gonna try to get the best in the world with plant diseases. And try to get them in this chat and talk about everything. Let it yeah. lettuce lettuce mosaic virus. That's what yep. that looks like. Ooh, I never even heard of this one before. P, a nation virus. So yeah, you notice that you see notice the difference up here. It looks like it's yeah. starting to die off. P wilt. I think P wilt comes with like too much pressure, too much heat, and uh, that kind of affects the plant. You can tell the leaves over here are starting to turn yellow. Storage and preservation. Uh, cool quickly to remove field heat. 32 degrees is ideal. Store in the refrigerator in a vented plastic bag. And welcome in, Bushcraft family. Welcome in. And thank you. Just to let you guys know, when I started off my channel, the one person that reached out to me right away was Bushcraft family. Yeah. And uh, I, I will always appreciate that. And thank you, Charles, for everything to get me started. And uh, create a nice path for me for success, and I appreciate that. Freq frequently asked questions. I have problems getting my peas to emerge early in a year. Well, peas generally germinate and merge better when soil temperatures are above 40. For early plantings, germinate seeds indoors prior to planting. These establish more rapidly. As soils warm, you can plant directly in a garden. Following older seed or poorly stored seed may not germinate or merge. And as we talked, if plant directly in the yard, but also uh, start some inside. Because if something doesn't germinate, you could put them right into the soil and your, so all your rows would be perfect. Right. Um, why are the flowers falling off my plants? Well, plants may have been in the water or heat sh uh, stressed just prior to after the flower opens. Pea flowers are very sensitive to temperatures above 80. And if uh, dry conditions occur, the plants will shed their flowers, keep the soil moist, and mulch later uh, plantings to minimize these stresses. Why do pea pods get stringy? Pea pods are uh, further evidence of heat or stress, of water stress. Fibers in the pods get tougher, making the pods less palatable. And... 
we talked about those the pest control. So with P, the identifications, what we talked about before, the, the screen aphids and how to control those aphids, plant virus resistant peas, watch aphids from plant with a stream of water, destroy infested plants after harvest, uh, over fertilize and increases populations, treat plants with appropriate insecticides. Army worms. A lot of people have questions about army worms and cutworms. So, well, one way is control your weeds in the garden that provide and that provide cover for worms. Use appropriate insecticides. If populations are high, worms often hide under organic mulches. And using surround guys, surround could be your friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love surround. It's organic. I don't like to use anything. We want to grow everything healthy. So you should try to use any organic way you could do to grow your vegetables and use it for control. Um, welcome in, Denise Lee. Welcome in. And there's Sheena Sales. Thank you guys for coming. Um, the pea weevil. It's the pea weevil is a brown. It's a beetle, guys. The pea weevil is a beetle. Broad inch now. <laughs> Get him out of the garden. <laughs> Never mind. I wanted to sing a song, but it was not going to rhyme. <laughs> um, early planting and harvest minimize the exposure. Pick up adults when found and apply appropriate chemicals if populations are high. So I got this uh, master gardener's guide, and I really don't, I don't like using this again any kind of chemicals if I don't have to. I don't use any chemicals at all. Like if I do have an issue, I try to battle it out with organic methods. And if not, then I'm just, that's it. There's nothing that more I can do about it. And then I just let, but you're always going to have bugs in your garden. Always. And I'm just going to go right down to the last one. Cause these involved uh, insecticides too. And I really don't like that. The powdery mildew is very common. Uh, plant early mature in a resistant variety. Spring cro crops have less mildew problems than autumn plantings. So that's very good to know. So that is part, that was our growing guide. Mm -hmm. And we got a lot of this stuff to do on this channel. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit and enjoyed the way we did this. Again, we're going to be totally different from anybody else you see. And that's what, that's what part of our channel is about. We got to be different. There's too many people copying off things. Well, we're not doing that. <laughs> or as much. You know, there'll be things, but we want things to be different. That's what we want to do on our channel. For those people that just came into the channel, we're going to say this several times during the lives. So we're just so super excited about this. Yes. If you're going to buy seeds at, at, at my gardener, go buy at my gardener seeds, $2 a piece. Use the code grow big, which is down below. You get ten percent off, ten percent off your packet. It's you know, only for your seeds are really inexpensive to begin with, so you can buy fifty, sixty dollars worth of seeds and get a ton of seeds. You can plant an entire garden if you wanted to, and use Grow Big TV get ten percent off. You will be so happy. And by doing it, it's going to help us ass out because Luke gets when he gets his results. He sees how many we sold in our life. All right. So it's like it's us versus, uh, you know, the other big channels out there that Luke uses, like Roots and Refuge. So I'm looking to be number one. <laughs> so let's do this. <laughs> let's do this. And uh, and Luke's coming our channel Tuesday for the interview, which is a really big thing for us. Totally. And it's a big thing for you guys because you guys, this is going to be up for us forever. And Luke only does one channel for interviews. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited about that. I can't believe he chose. I can't believe we're going to be the only ones to interview him. I need I need to do a lot of like deep digging here. I'm going to ask him a lot of questions. It's going to be great. Yeah, so we got a question from Dr. Paul Ruffin. Will you do an episode in successful uh, growth? I able to get sprouts and then they die. Well, that comes from a variety of reasons. Yes. So they could be temperature, mm -hmm. be what you what's in your soil. That's very important. Um, 
a location has to do a lot of things. That could be about your seed. It could be about weed pressure. Um, but we'll try to answer that more thoroughly, Paula. We'll answer you. If you guys have any kind of questions, just let us know. We'll try to answer it to the best we know. And if we don't know it totally, hey, we'll find out and we'll get you to answer right away. The best thing to do is to test it out in several locations too. figure out maybe it could be that particular location if you're direct sowing and, and see gardening is just one big science experiment. So, you know, do things a little bit differently the next time. I know it has taken me maybe two years to grow peas successfully. And even last year I screwed up. It was only because I did the wrong, I did totally did the wrong pea selection. Okay. I did it, but even I messed up. So, you know, it's one big experiment and, you know, test it out, see, maybe do different areas in your garden beds, or if you have a grow pot or grow whatever, move that, see if, you know, it needs more sunlight or, or something like that, or maybe you're not grow, uh, watering as much. You or know. too much water. If you have too much water, the plants die off. So that, that really happens too. The proper water is very important. And Tammy posted something here, which is very important, too. So in Michigan, they are coated. And so they don't, it's it's hard to germinate. So that's she very. Says it's starting inside that is successful. Then once, okay. Okay. Once they get off, uh, outside, they die. You, okay. So it very, there could be a couple things wrong there. One, it could be you're touching the roots too much. Because specifically with peas, they don't like to be messed around with. Um, it may be something that you want to direct sow. And then, let's see. Yeah, hardening them off wouldn't be an issue if you direct sowed. So my suggestion is, is maybe try in April or an end of March of this year, this next year, um, try and, and uh, plant. And my suggestion is... I buy a crap ton of seeds. I buy like I buy a pound of peas and I plant them all. And I totally don't follow the planning guide and I know I need to. But I just dump them all in a, like a long ditch. I put them all in there and each one of them they grow. They pop up, they grow. And um that's how I do it. And the more you grow, the more you're going to get. So, and if you have too much, you can always rip them out. But um, that was my, that's my suggestion. Direct sowing and me, we broke up. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, my biggest problem with planting peas is the animals when you direct sow. Because they, they go, they're out there. They're like, oh, peas, that sounds good to me. Yum, yeah. yum, yum. And uh, try to, you could put like uh, some kind of cloth over top to get them started. Yeah. Because once they get started, the the animals don't come usually don't come by. People grow in so many different ways. So if you do have a lot of animals nearby, um, I've seen people grow in gutters, grow peas in gutters. <laughs> um, and then what they do then is they get them started in the gutter, and the gutter is open ended. So then when they're ready, they just slide it out of the gutter and put it directly on the ground. Then they cover it up. So I've seen that too. So there's so many different ways to grow. Do a little research, find out, because a lot of the UK guys, that's how they do it. They grow it in a gutter. They don't mess with the roots. They slide it out of the gutter and then they cover it because they have so many pests. They they always use the uh, row covers. So that's something to really think about um, too. And you just have to experiment. Like I said, gardening is an experiment, a big science experiment and just Figure out what works best for you. And my my suggestion is because it worked best out for me because I did several years of messing things up. Like I, I first started out with King Tut peas and then I started out with some and then I had one turkey that kept coming in my garden and eating my peas. And, you know, so I've had issues, too. So you just <laughs> you just have to go with the flow. And then one year you will have the best crop you've ever had. And I did. I had so many peas. I wish I still had them. I had so many. I, I think I had that year 20 pounds. And it was like, it was like, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> well, you know what? 
<laughs> we have a did you know segment. Did you know? 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 So our did you know segment is by Juby. Juby. Let's, do, let's see what Juliana has to say. Did you know? This week's Did You Know is all about peas. Did you know peas are among the oldest plants grown in the world? They belong to the family called legumes. The oldest pea was found in Thailand over 3,000 years ago. Did you know that there are certain characteristics of the garden pea that include plant height, the seed texture, the seed color, the flower color, the pea pod size, the pea pod color, and flower position? Did you know that peas come in many colors such as green, yellow, and purple? Did you know there are three main kinds of peas? They are snap peas, snow peas, and shelling peas. Did you know that the first peas were frozen by Clarence Birdseye, who invented the plate froster in 1920 to preserve foods? Did you know that in 1984, Janet Harris broke a Guinness World Record by consuming 7,175 individual peas in 60 minutes using chopsticks? Could you imagine if she used a spoon? <laughs> peas were used in early exploration of genetics. Gregor Johann Mendel used peas lay the foundation of our modern science of genetics. Did you know that one serving of peas contains as much vitamin C as two large apples and more fiber than a slice of wholemeal bread and more thiamine than a pint of wholemeal? Did you know? Did you know why peas can make you happy? They have higher levels of serotonin and tryptophan than any other vegetable. Did you know that the majority of fresh frozen garden peas and petit pois, petit, petit pois are frozen with the staggering two and a half hours of being picked, locking in all the nutrients. And lastly, did you know that Thomas Jefferson grew over 30 varieties of peas on his plantation? Did you know? Back to you, Joan. Nice. Did you be? Nice. That was awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. That was awesome. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? <laughs> did you know? <laughs> If the sound was a little bit off, guys, I'm sorry about that. Um, I still can't hear anything. <laughs> anyway, Julian, that was great. And thank you for doing that for us. And we have another segment come up from Dr. Paula Ruffin. And if Dr. Paula is going to do a four, three, five minute segment each Thursday, and it's going to be on a vegetable we're talking about. So let's see what. This, well, thank you so much for doing that. And go check out Dr. Paula Ruffin's channel. She has 925 subs, 928 now. So go check it out. Peas. You may have heard that a time or two growing up. Well, I think the problem I had with peas growing up was that they always seemed to come out of a can and they had that dark green color and they were really just quite putrid. They were mushy. They just had no appeal whatsoever. Thankfully today, peas come in many fresh forms that are delicious and nutritious. And peas aren't a vegetable at all. They're actually a legume. So they live in the same family as lentils and other beans. Peas got a bad rap for a little while, besides being that dark green can variety, because they're a starchy vegetable. And so people who had diabetes or other blood sugar handling issues were told don't eat starchy vegetables like peas and corn. Well, that seems to be the standard American diet was peas and corn. Peas come in three main varieties. There are field peas, which have the inedible shell, and you crack those open and you pull those beautiful fresh peas out, and you can actually eat those fresh. In fact, peas are the one and only legume that we eat the fresh version of. Then we have snow peas, and the snow peas, those are the ones that you'll typically use for stir fry, and that's the whole pea pod, and there's a very tiny pea inside, but you eat the pod, the pea, and the whole thing. And then the last main one is the sugar snap peas. And those are actually my favorite. I will eat those all through the summer as soon as they come fresh. And those are the ones that you that have the full pea inside along with the edible shell. And they are sweet and they're delicious and they're really high in fiber. In fact, all varieties are really high in fiber and nutrients. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, but what about split peas? Well, split peas are actually the field pea that's been cracked open, dried, and then they split them to make cooking a lot faster. So however you choose your peas, here's the nutrient story behind it. While yes, they are considered high in carbohydrates, the good news is that they are so high in fiber. Peas are actually high in complex carbohydrates, not simple carbohydrates. So simple carbohydrates are like table sugar. 
And then complex carbohydrates are a long chain of sugars. And so it takes a while for the body to break down. So while peas are high in complex carbohydrates, they're actually low on the glycemic index. And what that means is it doesn't have this massive spike in blood sugar when you eat it. And when you can eat a food that is high in fiber, you're actually going to balance your blood sugar a little bit better. The other special thing about peas in any form is that they are incredibly high in potassium. Now, what's so special about potassium? Potassium is in balance with sodium. The typical American diet is overrun with sodium because of our highly processed food in our diets. So high levels of sodium can end up raising the blood pressure. They can cause bloating, inflammation, and inflammation can lead to chronic pain. But if you're eating foods that are also high in potassium, potassium, when it goes up, it will actually help sodium to come down. So it can help your body to start to flush any excess inflammation. Peas make a great source of protein supplements. So if you're taking a supplement that has pea protein powder, it's because peas themselves contain essential and non-essential amino acids that can actually help give you the levels of protein that you might be looking for in a day. So with all of these benefits of peas, we now know that they're not the evil starchy vegetable that we once thought they were, and yet they're super high in fiber, high in vitamin C, high in protein, high in potassium, and all of these incredible nutrients. Why wouldn't you eat peas? Just stay away from those nasty canned ones. Those are going to be yucky, and they're going to have additives in those cans. All right, you guys, that's the lowdown on peas. Let me know what you think. Do you like peas? What's your favorite form of peas? Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And as always, I appreciate you being here and we'll see you on the next one. Awesome. Boom. Boom. <laughs> you get out of the park. And by the way, you need to go over there and subscribe to Dr. Paula Ruff. And by the way, not only is she a great doctor, but she's also a great person. So go over there, subscribe, love her. And um, that was amazing. You did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And next week, next Thursday, our growing guide is going to be on tomatoes. Oh, so. gosh. There's going to be so much information. My head's going <laughs> to explode. And ex expect <laughs> next Thursday to be a little longer than an hour and a half. <laughs> so uh, just because tomatoes can be talked for a long, long time. And we don't want to jip herself on any of that time. And it's look, Dr. Paula goes, boom. boom. <laughs> I, love that. I love that. I think the boom thing is just really like taken off. I think more people do it than, <laughs> than I realize. That's so awesome. Yeah, that's going to be one of our favorite things we say on this channel. So we have 38 people in the chat. So we're going to give away some stuff, guys. We're going to give away the seeds that we're talking about. Oh, we got to still talk about this. Oh, we got to talk about the seeds first. What we, we messed up. So it's going to go a little longer today. <laughs> hey, I, did you guys know if you go to MI Gardener and you type in grow big, you can get 10% off of your seeds. 10% off? 10%. That's like, boom. Where could you get that deal? <laughs> Love it. You can't get that deal anywhere. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> it's only used one time. You know, you go don't use it one time. <laughs> make sure it's worthy. And make sure before you click checkout that you put grow big to get in that discount. Because if you don't, you clicked it, it went through, and you're like, oh, I forgot to put grow big. <laughs> so make sure before you sign out that happens. That was fun. That was great. <laughs> yes, Caitlin, you can still use it then as well. Um, this is our code for our show um, in general. So um, when you guys go and you like you're waiting to the end of the week or something like that, go and get your seeds and then make sure you type in grow big and then that will count for us. So um, it'll help us with MI Gardener. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate that, guys. And I'm sorry. If, um, we're just so excited about this. This is not... <laughs> It's not, we should be having 2 million subs for this to happen. <laughs> this is amazing. We're a little small little peons right now. <laughs> you notice the way you use peons? <laughs> Aww. But uh, yeah, this is awesome. And thank you again, Dr. Paula. And thank you, Jijajubi. Um, They're going to be on every Thursday. 
So get to work now. <laughs> we really just... appreciate you. And um, hopefully um, Dr. Paula is trying to grow her channel right now. So go over there and subscribe. She has some really great information. She's super smart. And everything she says makes complete logical sense. You just need, you need to experience the Dr. Paula Ruffin experience. So go over there and check her out. And I, I have a little bit in common with Dr. Paul because I was going to a chiropractor pretty much, pretty much since I was little. And I've been in the sports field since I was very little. So when she's on her live today, I'm so pumped up. I'm like, <laughs> my whole mental level First and everything. All, you're always pumped up. Oh, you want to be there? It must have been like explosive. <laughs> it, was a good, it was a great day. <laughs> very explosive. <laughs> It was enough for me to go outside and order cruise <laughs> tickets for uh, Alaska 25 after that. <laughs> I exploded. What was I doing? Um, and if you guys haven't seen that, Alaska 25 was with Ramblin' with the Brums and uh, Lazy Days Ahead with Jesse and Lisa. And I signed up for the cruise today. So uh, you could put a down deposit down. Uh, for us, for three of us, it was $370. And uh, and it was like, it's buy one, get one free. So if you have four people, it's more worth it. So, which is really, really cool. And I don't have to pay for a while. So that's even better. My dad said you were pumped up because of the fees. <laughs> no, that was the night before. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a very good 24 hours for me, guys. Okay. So let's talk about a little bit, a little bit about the seed packets. And that's what part of our channel is about. It's about the seed packets because nobody has ever talked about the seed packets the way we do. Mm -mm. So here we are, the Kentucky Wonder Pole Bean. Not, it's already forever. This is why this is the pole bean I grow. And do you want to? Yeah, I'll do it. It's fine. And I actually have it on my phone too, so I don't have to like be this far away from the screen. <laughs> Perfect. We're good. We're good. Um, okay, the Kentucky Wonder Pole Bean. Okay, this 1800s, by the way, that's super cool. 1800s, that's so old. This 1800s variety is known for its exponential flavor of tenderness. <clears throat> One of the oldest and most popular green beans on the market. The nine inch pods are produced in clusters and are thick and stringless. Delicious, fresh, frozen, or dried, and shell beans, and shell beans, period. Sorry. Early maturing and extremely productive. So, okay, you want to start them indoors two to three weeks before the last frost. You want to direct sow them after the last frost. Now, it says on the back of the package to direct sow. I've actually started beans um, indoors in my grow station. You can do that as well, but you really want to plant these direct sow them if at all possible. Um, days to germinate is eight to 10 days. Germination temperature is between 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, or if you're in Canada, 21 to 29 degrees Celsius or anywhere else around the world that uses Celsius. Days to maturity is 60 days. Plant spacing is four inches. And plant size is five to six feet, um, and they grow in these vines. So you could do a trellis. You could do a cheap trellis like we talked about with growing with the peas. Um, or you can do the – I know there's so many different methods. There's the three sisters method that people use. Um, so, you know, check those out. Pick these beans um, young to enjoy a snap bean or let them grow to maturity to cook or dry for long-term uh, storage. Yields come long as the vine is growing. The more you pick of these delicious beans, the greater the uh, fruit set will be. And you want to grow them about a half an inch deep. Um, they are container friendly. Um, you need to grow them in the full sun. Um, you want to allow two to four weeks for germination. And they are a climbing variety, which so far the climbing varieties um, have been the best for me. I think they do really great. So um, that was the Kentucky Wonder uh, Wonder Pole Bean. So check that out. So I have a couple other notes with that too. 
It was commercially known as the Kentucky Wonder in 1877 by James J.H. Gregory and Sons. And the, the fleshy pods uh, grow up to 10 inches. And it, like you said, seven feet tall. But here's something, guys. The, pe- the bean seeds are brown. And far, a lot of farmers grow this type, too. So, uh, which because they, since they grow so tall, you get huge yields. Mm-hmm. Um, also, some trivia. In 1907, the K- Kentucky Wonder Bean it was the most widely grown pole bean in America. The Kentucky Wonder Bean is also known as the American Sickle Pole. You ever heard that one before? Mm-hmm. American Sickle Pole. Also, the Eastern Wonder, the Egg Harbor, the Georgia Monstrous Pole. <laughs> Improved Southern Prolific, Missouri Prolific, the Old Homestead, the Texas Pole, and Improved Kentucky Wonder. Nice. And if you want it stringless, make sure you harvest it when you're when it's young. So just a couple other notes with that. <laughs> so our next seed packet. Now try to pronounce this one, guys. <laughs> okay, so this is the Listata di Cambia mm-hmm. uh, eggplant. And yeah, say that about five times fast. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going on with this eggplant. Um, this is a beautiful Italian heirloom um, eggplant that has a gorgeous violet and white streaks. Um, the sweet eggplant is oval shaped and easy to cook as it requires no peeling, which is awesome. You want to start this indoors six to eight weeks before the last frost. The days to germinate are seven to 14 days. Germination temperature is between 60 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 to 30 degrees Celsius. Days to maturity are 75 to 90 days and plant spacing is 12 to 18 inches. Um, the plant size is 20 to 30 inches. It's a bush variety. Um, and and you want to plant this about a fourth of an inch deep. It is container friendly and you want full sun. Now, when you're harvesting this, you use a sharp shears. You snip the stem just above the fruit to avoid damage to your plant. For ideal flavor um, and tenderness, it is best eaten when the fruit is small and shiny. Over a mature fruit will feel soft and the seeds will darken. Um, it might not taste near as good either. Um, so, yeah. And I'm not a big fan of <laughs> eggplant. I will eat it, but if you deep fry it, it tastes even better. <laughs> and got a couple other notes with that. Ooh. Um, it was introduced in southern France during an eight, the early 1850s. As the striped Guadalupe. So how about that? That's pretty cool. And it was an old cross of a purple and a white variety. Uh, let me see what else we got here. I think that was really interesting right there. I have no idea. And I love it when you can cut it really, really thin. This is really funny. This is something my grandfather used to do. He used to cut it really thin and mm-hmm. batter it in cornmeal and fry it. And then we would put maple syrup on it like a pancake i don't know Smart. Why, that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why we did that but we did okay so we're moving on we are moving on to green arrow peas by the way do your research on your peas don't mess up like i did so okay the green arrow uh shelling pea as an English pea variety that provides bountiful harvest and easy picking. It will require some uh, form of a uh, trellis to support heavy yields. Pods grow about four inches long with eight to 11 plump peas per pod. Most delicious when excellent boiled, boiled alone, but and also complements pasta and salads and more. I love it in stir fries. Yummy. You want to direct sow as soon as the soil is workable. So that's about six six to eight weeks prior to the last frost. Days to germinate are seven to 10 days. Um, Germination temperature is 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, The temperature for Celsius is 15 to 21 degrees. 
Days till maturity is 60 days. The plant spacing is two inches and fruit size is about four inch, inch pods. Now you want to plant this about a half inch deep, um, full sun. They are very cold tolerant. I've told you guys before, um, you can have snow on top of your peas and they're going to still grow spring and fall and they do climb. So, um, you can use anything for a trellis. Peas can um, be harvested when the pods start to bulge and turn green before the peas start to harden. The best time to harvest peas is in the morning after the dew has dried. Using two hands, hold the vine while you pinch off the pea pods. Pulling just the pod can cause damage to your vines, hindering further production. Continuous harv harvesting will um, help produce more vine. And yes. so this, with this variety, the green arrow pea, it, it hails from England, and it has been a gourmet variety in England for years. I mean, Europe for years. So when you're going for Europe, this is uh, this is the pea they use, guys. So which is really cool. Here's our next vegetable, guys. The New Mex Joe Parker pepper, and this is hotter than it looks. Really. Uh, it's hot. Uh, it's first, cool. Maybe it got crossed with some other peppers I had, but wow, I didn't. Ex when I first bit into it, I, I didn't expect it to be that hot, and I was like, "Wow, that was hot." <laughs> um. Okay, so <clears throat> do you want me to do it, or you want to do it? You go ahead. Okay. Um, I love peppers, and I like a little kick to my peppers. I don't like to be totally kicked. <laughs> but I do like a little bit of a kick. So the New Mex pepper is a great roasting pepper. These plants produce large harvests of mild, thick, walled fruits that contain few seeds. That's what I like because I hate those seeds. Cleaning them out is a pain. Once peppers turn from green to red, you know they are ready to enjoy. Yummy. Start indoors eight to 10 weeks before the last frost. Days to germinate are 10 to 21 days. Germination temperature is 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit and 23 to 29 degrees Celsius. Days of maturity are 70 to 95 days. Planting space, you wanna plant 12 to 18 inches and fruit size is five to six inches long. So that's a pretty big pepper. You wanna plant it about a fourth of inch, inch deep um, it is container friendly. So when you get them started um, eight to 10 weeks before the last frost, that's really awesome. And um, they need full sun. To harvest peppers, use sharp shears to cut the pepper stem from the plant to avoid plant damage. Once peppers mature to their specialized color, the fruit will become more tender, um, signaling its ripeness. Yeah. So I was just trying to find my Scoville units on it, and I don't, I don't have it on the sheet I had, but I, I was very surprised. I didn't expect it to be that hot, and I don't think it's extremely hot pepper by no degree with the Scoville unit. It just kind of hit me. It was shocking. I was totally shocked. But this is a great pepper. I'm definitely growing this pepper in my garden this year. Yummy. And because uh, the taste was very good, it was very hot. Yes, but. Uh, Maybe it was maybe I had no idea what was going on because I could have high bananas like nothing these days. Um, I have I, every single day I have jalapenos and I feel like it's sweet to me these now. Um, but definitely try to grow this variety, guys. New Mex Joe Parker pepper and it's so easy to grow. It's a very healthy plant. Um, I had a lot of success growing it uh, multiple years, so definitely. Get the New Mex Joe Parker pepper from and my Gardner seeds. Boom! Did, hey, me. no, did you know if you go to MI Gardner and you use Grow Big, you can get ten percent off of your seeds? Did you know that? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys. There's 32 people in the chat. We've been having about 30 to 40 people in the chat for the last uh, 30, 40, 45 minutes, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Um, we're going to give away these seeds that we're talking about in a bottle of hot sauce from Pucker Butt. And yeah. today's hot sauce we're giving away is goji berry pineapple. That's from oh. Pucker Butt. 
So we got some trivia coming up in a little bit. So, but we have one last tomato talking about. Matt's a wild cherry tomato. Look at that. Isn't that a beauty? Beautiful. Um, have you had these before? Yes, definitely. Are they delicious? They're very good. Um, they're not my favorite, but they're up there. I would definitely grow it. I have no problems with anybody growing it. Um, I wouldn't put it up here if I didn't like it. Um, they do very, they grow abundantly for, for sure. Um, definitely, definitely tried this tomato, this cherry tomato. Okay, so yep. Matt's wild cherry tomato. It's an indeterminate tomato. Indeterminate cherry with a attitude. Rawr. Rawr. This cherry, rawr. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Okay, this cherry tomato produces a deep red, small one inch fruits that weigh roughly half an ounce. A must grow for fresh eating and even adding a pop of acidity, of acidic, rich tomato goodness into soups, stews, and sauces. Interesting. I. I have used um, smaller cherry tomatoes in my tomato sauce before, but not on purpose, just because I had a bunch of them and I just threw them in there. Um, I never thought about just using them to make a sweeter sauce. That sounds amazing. I don't know where my brain is. It makes sense. Um, but yeah, never thought about it that way. Start indoors six to eight weeks before last frost. Days to germinate are 5 to 10 days. Germination temperature is 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 to 32 degrees Celsius. Oh, yeah. In a hot sauce? Yeah, Ted. That's what I'm talking about. Days <laughs> to 30, 60 days. That's really good. In fact, that's super fast. Um, plant spacing, 18 to 36 inches. Fruit size is one ounce. So... They are an indeterminate tomato, so you want to you also want to plant these about one eighth of an inch deep, and um, they also require full sun. Tomatoes come in a variety of colors, therefore we can learn to determine ripeness through other senses. As the tomatoes ripen, um, colors become shiny. The weight of the fruit begins to increase, while the firmness starts to give away. As tomatoes reach their peak ripeness, their aroma will become stronger, signaling that they are ready. <clears throat> Using clean shears, cut tomatoes from the stem, leaving the, um, what's it say? Pedicle? Um, green top attached to the fruit. And yes, you can also not do that with shears. You're going to see like a little knob on there and you just want to take your thumb, you push on that knob and it'll pop right off. However, just be careful and don't destroy your tomato plants. So the story of how Matt's wild cherry tomato came to almost an interesting tomato itself. It's actually a red currant tomato variety, and its origins go back to Hidalgo, Mexico, in mm -hmm. the eastern part of the country. Um, it was first distributed them to Matt Liebman, Matt, you know, Matt and Matt's Wild Cherry, a former University of Maine faculty member from there, they became known as Matt's Wild Cherry Tomato, and then been they've been making the world a tastier place ever since. <laughs> That's a terrible description. <laughs> Jeez, Matt, you could have done better than that. <laughs> so that's our Matt's Wild Cherry. And they I tell you what, some I love the taste of a smaller cherry tomato. But sometimes it skins. So if you have too much water or not enough water, it could do something with the skins of a tomato. So just make sure you properly water them and you'll grow you'll grow this every single year. So that's my Matt's wild cherry tomato. Mm -hmm. Hope you guys like that. And now we have trivia time to win these seeds. Trivia! We gotta come up with a jingle. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we got to come up with the jingle. Okay, I hope you guys are ready for this. There's 38 people in the chat. We had 42 a while ago. People must have heard me read and like, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Get enough of Joe talking already. Okay, so trivia time. You answer the question, you win first. Some are very easy. Some are a little harder. So you ready? You ready? You ready? Ready? 
I'm ready. And Gil, welcome in, Gil. Hello, okay, Gil. Here we go. The first packet. Let me see. Where's those seeds? Where did those seeds go? Oh, here they are. Hold on, guys. Just got to write everything down. Just to let you guys know, seeds went out yesterday and more is coming out. I'm working on for the show to get these out. I'm a very busy person. So I try to, there's 24 hours in a day. I get my 24 hours in. <laughs> so here we go. The first winner is going to be win Matt's Wild Cherry. Boom. Here comes the question. Boom. Where is the world's largest botanical garden? First one that? answers it in the side chat wins the seeds. <laughs> in the crown. You got to come up with the city. You got to come up with the whole thing, just not New York or something. You got to tell me exactly where. So I'm like Jackson, New Jersey. You got to tell me like that kind of location. Okay, so I think people are going to start going to Google. <laughs> this is a tough one. What is the world's largest? Yes, you're right. No, <laughs> that'd be kind of cool though. <laughs> Joe's backyard. <laughs> Da, 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 da. No, it's not in the United States. Come on, guys. Boom! Becoming Boom. a green stalker. Got it. Boom! Boom. So congratulations to becoming a green stalker. And it wasn't my backyard. Damn. <laughs> I wish it was mine. <laughs> okay, ready? Next winner will win New Max Joe Parker Pepper. Joe Parker. Okay, ready? Here we go. 38 people in the chat. In which Canadian province can you find the booch? Butch Art Gardens. Butchy, butchy, butchy. Boom! Happy Mac is a winner. Congratulations, Happy Mac. Happy Mac. You won. Yes. All right, the next winner is going to win the eggplant. This is a delicious eggplant, everyone. And you get these seeds at MI Gardener. <laughs> and make sure you use the code Grow Big. Yeah, you get 10% off. And that's for people in our chat, guys. That's just, we don't want the world to know that they could get this deal. Okay, here we go. How many acres is in New York, New York Botanical Garden? There might be an easy question coming up. Nope. I'll give you guys a clue. It's higher than Kalen's number. Boom! <laughs> Wick Wickershire, oh. guys. The Wick Wickershire. You all awesome. enough. 250 acres. Who knew there was 250 acres in New York City? <laughs> <laughs> I know, really. You don't think about well, that. I don't, I don't know if it's New York. It's not New York City, but uh, no. in New York. Okay. Congratulations, Billy. That was awesome. Okay. The Kentucky Wonder Paul Bean. You know, beans, they're a magical fruit. 
Yeah, 250, Jane. Isn't that crazy? Yep. Great. Okay, here we go. What plant is known for the ability to catch insects? Come on, guys. I had to throw an easy one in there. <laughs> Which plant is known for its ability to catch insects? Oh, trusting God. You got it. Woo! Venus fly trap right off the bat. So make sure you guys email me. Jane's going to put down my – it's Garden State Garden at Yahoo.com. Congratulations, guys. That was pretty awesome. It took a couple seconds. <laughs> it's funny. When I do these trivia things and I'm in a contest, I'm like, I know it. I know it. I know it. And then all of a sudden somebody says it. Oh, see, I knew it. <laughs> okay. And we're going to do the P. And after the P, we got the hot sauce. Eggplant because she said, give that one to Corky. She needs the eggplant. <laughs> so you're going to send me the eggplant, Joe? Oh, sure. Okay. So thank you, Trust. Those, those eggplant, I mean, those beans, it's beans. You get beans. Kentucky Wonder Beans. Oh, okay. Cool. So those Kentucky beans go to Corky. Thank you so much, Trust. Okay, the green arrow P, guys. The green arrow P. Here it comes. Here it comes. There is the Venus flytrap. Boom. Which vegetable can be used as a natural dye for fabrics? Come on, guys. Come on. And throw some easy ones in there. We just talked about it at our last interview. Come on, Dr. Paul. Dr. Paul! Woo! You're the winner, but no chicken dinner. You got seeds. <laughs> you got seeds. So, Dr. Paula, please email me your address at gardenstategarden at yahoo.com. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the last one's going to be a tough one. Okay. You guys are going to win. This is a really great combination from Egg Curry at Pucker Butt. The goji Berry Pineapple. Goji Berry Pineapple. Okay. Let's see if you guys could get it. There is the answer. Beets. Which plant can produce electricity as demonstrated by research team in Massachusetts? Yeah, isn't that an interesting combo? Nope. Great answer, David Gray, but that's not the answer. Yeah, definitely great. I would have said the same thing. Come on, y'all. Think. 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 Come on. Nope, Who, nothing out there yet. Who's going to be the winner? Woo. Woo. <laughs> I would have thought Tater, too. Yeah. So this is from MIT. See, I had to get a little tricky here. I would have never thought this at all. That's the reason why it was a good question. <laughs> yeah, it is a hard one. It produces electricity as demonstrated by the research team of MIT. <clears throat> no, it's not taters, guys. Nope. I think we have to do our, our own experiment with this someday. Hmm. We might have to give a hint. Okay, I got a hint. I planted this year next to my pool. So if you guys seen any of my videos 
I planted something next to my pool this year on a table. No. So I did this video on a grow bag. It's And it's not lettuce, by the way. It's something close to that. That's a pretty good... Uh, a bear keg. <laughs> Boom! Mike's chaotic go. gardening. You just won. Boom! Good job. Isn't that isn't that, that was that was that was pretty cool. Yep. Who knew? So I found that very interesting. I never knew spinach could do that. I hope you guys, there's 40 people in the chat, which is really awesome. Hope you guys can share this out. Our growing guides, we expect it to keep on going and growing more. Links go into Google and all that kind of stuff. But we want to focus on you, not anybody else that's not here. You know, and get go to my gardener, 10% off. You can't get that anywhere. And you also get free shipping if you spend so much money. So I think if you spend like $16, you get free shipping. So And plus you get the 10% off. So it's more like getting 25% off any other company, which is really cool. Okay. Yeah. Go so, to the site, type in uh, Grow Big. Um, when you check out, you get 10% off of your order for MI Gardener, which is freaking awesome. You're going to get so many seeds. You're going to be so happy. Love learning new things. Yeah, I hope you guys had a good time with this. Uh, we're going to be doing this every Tuesday and Thursday. There might be a situation where we might have a family situation. For example, my son has a something on the 19th. He's he's part of a band, and it's at 7 o'clock. It, so we got to – I don't know. I We, we want to continue doing a show. So either Corky will be by herself or we'll do a later time. I don't know. We have to figure that out. But that's two weeks from now. We can't worry about two weeks from now. We got a big week next week. And we yeah. got to, we're going to be putting out a video. Oh, also on Sunday, fun day, uh, we give away free seeds and a whole bunch of other stuff. And uh, we're trying to get hours for the show. So I hope you guys come to Sunday, fun day. It's a fast way by get us hours. Uh, it really works out really well. And just make sure you go to the subscription video there'd be a video just leave a comment you get put on a wheel and that would all of them really really helps um and happy max said he would like mike to get the pepper seeds oh okay awesome don't forget you guys on tuesday we are interviewing mi gardner this is his first interview like he doesn't do interviews so this is his first and we're going to be interviewing him. So tell all your friends, you know, let them know and um, show up on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the big MI Gardener interview. Uh, I'm nervous, but I'm happy. It's going to be great. And it's made a growing guide on Thursday. Yep. So we expect uh, next week to be a huge week for us. And we're going to come up with a video. Hopefully this week, the next couple of days, about our ugly. <laughs> I can't even say it. <coughs> our I tell you what, Christmas sweater competition. You know you if, want to join. You know. You. you know what I have? I have something pictured in my head, and I'm like, "There's no way I could put this on because it, it's a, a, a it's a lot of creativity. <laughs> There's a lot of creativity put into this, and." Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble. You know what? If I wear it here, I can wear it when I Uber for. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be hilarious! That'd be hilarious. <laughs> tips, tips, tips. Joe gets the booby prize, and it's up to you guys to send it to him. <laughs> and so the winner of the contest, I'll okay, get a ninja, ninja mixer. Yes, a ninja really mixer. Really cool. They usually range between ninety nine, one hundred fifty dollars. Summers in there. So, which is a really good prize. If you guys want to add to the prize for second and third place, I'm going to put seeds in some kind of package or something. So, uh, first three winners get something. Well, they all get something, but at least the third place gets something for their work to put in. 
but it's all about having fun, guys, and creating community and just having a laugh and people are coming together for this. So I'm so freaking excited. I know. <laughs> I I just can't believe this. <laughs> just like kind of at all right now. When you first told me about the MI Gardner and I was like, oh, like, and then I had, it really had to set in. I never ever saw him do an interview before. So I was just like, uh, like, yeah. kind of. We had an it. interview <laughs> with, on my uh, Sunday fun day with him before. And I'm like, you don't do any interviews <laughs> <laughs> and now he's doing it again. And, uh, I couldn't see it's the story so nice. with me. And Luke. It's really nice of him to do that for one. Like it's really cool. Yeah. Luke is one of the reasons why I'm still alive today. Tell you the truth. Uh, I was going a very stressful time in my life. I eat everything that I seen. I got extremely extreme. I'm heavy now, but I was really extremely heavy then. Uh, moved into this house. I didn't have a garden for a couple of years. He had a contest. I'm going to, I'm going to come to your house and plant the garden. And so I got everything ready, got everything set. And I came in second place in the contest. Oh, I can't believe I came in second place and he was going to bring all this, everything with him, And I uh, told him he could sleep here, you know, he has to get a hotel and so I used to, I talked to Cindy a lot at that time too, and uh, yeah, so I owe Luke a lot, uh, and he's very it's very much in my heart for what he did for me. And all, even though it was second place, he's one of the reasons why I didn't do bad things to myself, or not even do bad things to myself, just overeat myself. To, yeah. So, hey, there's Corner Col Clubhouse Cobble. I seen his live today. So welcome in. Thank you for coming. Um, yeah, crazy stuff, right? Agreed. Something you just learned today. <laughs> okay, guys. So we're gonna call us tonight. Thank you guys for all coming. Spread the news, really, guys. Buy some seeds. Spread out. Spread it out, because those results matter. Of who buy using those seeds, it really helps us out. Even if you buy two packets, mm -hmm. by him saying how many transactions, how many people, it helps. So two dollars a packet. And he ships buy... anywhere. He ships anywhere. Like Joe would literally order seeds and they would go to Israel. So they literally will go anywhere. The amount of seeds costs basically the same thing as shipping. <laughs> when I sent to Israel and UK and other places. So if I have to buy a send somebody a boatload of seeds, that's how I send them. I send them by in my garden. So that's the way to do it. Okay, guys. So good night, everyone. Thank you guys for all your support and thank you for making this program grow and uh grow big at MI Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, guys. everyone. Have a good night. <laughs>